Our hometown heroes, our soldiers, our sailors, our airmen, our Coast Guardsmen, our Marines, that they can say, because of me and people like me who risked all to protect millions, millions who will never know my name, that's why we still have an America. And for those of you tonight and all of the families who have lost the light of their lives, they can say to every American that it was my boy or it was my girl who stood their post and did their duty <clears throat> into eternity. 40 past the hour, that was retired General John Kelly at an event in 2014 honoring Gold Star families. General Kelly's 29-year-old son, First Lieutenant Robert Michael Kelly, was killed in 2010 while serving in Afghanistan. Kelly is expected to be President-elect Donald Trump's choice to lead the Department of Homeland Security. Joining us now, former Secretary of Homeland Security and two-term Democratic Governor of Arizona, Janet DiPolitano. She is currently President of the University of California. Also with us, news and finance anchor at Yahoo, Biana Goladriga, who's been in the news lately herself with her newsmaking interview with Dana Rohrbacher. That was something. We'll talk about that coming up. Um, great to have you back on the show. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I'd love to get uh, your, your thoughts on the, uh, the pick for Homeland Security or the suspected pick. I think, uh, you know, I think all things considered, it's a good pick. The secretary has to be someone who can multitask. You've got everything from counterterrorism to transportation to cybersecurity to immigration. Uh, you, you name it, it comes to the Department of Homeland Security. So having someone with experience and who can lead a large, complicated organization makes a lot of sense. Um, you lead in a huge university system, and there's a, a lot of concern after the election. Um, a lot of people feeling like they, their lives may change. Mm. Um, and you have a specific issue in, in your school system because of the number of undocumented students. That's right. Tell us about that. That's right. We, we probably have about 4,000 undergraduates who are what are called DACA. Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. These are the dreamers. They basically were brought here as, as young people. They did well in school. They've had a criminal history check. They've had a security check. They've gone through all the background checks. Uh, and they've done well enough to be admitted to the University of California, which is not the easiest thing in the world to do. Um, but DACA was created actually by an order I issued as Secretary of Homeland Security, so it's easily erased. Yeah. And, and the job of Secretary of Homeland Security is also to be a communicator with the public. And obviously we remember all of the concerns uh, and, and outrage that was raised by a lot of Americans concerned about Syrian refugees mm -hmm. coming into the U.S., whether they were properly vetted, whether they were terrorists, what have you. I just spent time with the family in Connecticut that the husband found a job as a baker. They have two beautiful young children. They could be your next door neighbors. Having said that, uh, there is some criticism about whether uh, your department or DHS did enough to communicate to Americans that, they, that their concerns should be alleviated, that there's a vetting process in place, that mm -hmm. terrorists are not coming in. Right. So I think it's important for the public to know that the vetting occurs overseas, and it's very thorough. It takes months, if not years, for refugees to be vetted and to pass those checks in order to come to the United States. And we're talking a lot of mothers and children and families, uh, So, uh, and they need a place to, to be at rest, to be peaceful, not to be living in a war zone. So uh, it is entirely appropriate that the United States, like other countries, take some of these refugees. I know you weren't thrilled that Donald Trump won the presidential election, but I wonder what you make of the last month or so of how he's conducted himself during the transition, the people he's chosen, the people he's appointed. Are you more or less hopeful for his administration than you were the day he was elected? Well, uh, I think time will tell the tale of the tape. Uh, he's got a lot of people who have no experience. Um, some may think that's a good thing, but running these big cabinet departments, these are big jobs and kind of coming in with, with no experience in government and politics and or any of the levers that make things work in a large agency uh, will be a test for some of these nominees.
So you think the CEO, say, for Secretary of State, someone like Rex Tillerson, that'd be a bad idea? You'd rather see someone with some better government experience? Well, I think we don't know what they'll do once they're in the government. And I think some of them will be surprised. They'll be surprised mm -hmm. about what they can do, but they'll also be surprised at some of the limitations on what they can That's do. That's always the shocker. Oh, and they'll really be surprised <laughs> about congressional oversight. That yeah. will come as an unpleasant surprise. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Jenna DiPolitano, thank you. It's great to see you. Thanks for being on the show this morning. Be honest, stay with us. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.